Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the TBS Unify Pro 32 HV VTX. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs and measure its output strength and on the second part of this review which will be probably released in about a week I'm going to head outdoors and test it out. Inside the bag along with the VTX you can find a straight MMCX to an SMA antenna connector and a harness for connecting it to a flat controller or directly to an FPV camera. The TBS Unify Pro 32 HVVTX features a double decker design that is going to help to better protect its internal parts and also for keeping it cool. Once unlocked, it supports 37 channels and has a selectable output rank of 25, 100, 400 and more than 1000 mV. The working voltage of the VTX is between 7 to 26 volts, so you can connect it directly to a LiPo battery between 2 to 6 cells. It supports both Crossfire and Smart Audio 2.1 protocols, and in case you want to configure it using your flight controller, make sure that it's running at least Betaflight 4.0. In addition, this VTX features an MM6 antenna connector, a micro USB port that will enable you to upgrade its firmware and also configure it using the TBS Agent X app, and an onboard microphone which can be turned on and off. The weight of the Unify Pro 32 HV VTX is 8.46 grams without the M6 antenna connector and 11.82 grams including it. So it's almost 4 grams heavier than the TBS Unify Pro HV. In addition, its outer dimensions are 36.9 by 24.8 by 5.6 millimeters. After connecting the VTX to your computer using its micro USB connector, it's going to be discovered on the TBS Agent X app, it will enable you to configure the VTX and also update its firmware. So over here you can find the firmware tab and currently no firmware update is available. Over here under the configuration tab you'll be able to configure the VTX. So first of all you can select whether you are going to configure the VTX using the Crossfire port or using Smart Audio and you can also turn it off. I'm going to set it to Smart Audio because I'm going to configure it using Betaflight. You can also enable or disable the onboard microphone. You can also set the VTX band channel and output strength. So as you can see, you can select between 25, 100, 400 and 1600 millivolts options. And of course, you are going to need to unlock the VTX if you want to enable these options. So if you are not going to unlock the VTX and still select any of these options, the power output will still be 25 mV. You can also set the temperature limit between 60 to 105 Fahrenheit and if the VTX is going to get to this temperature, it's going to throttle down its output strength. Finally, you can enable or disable pit mode and under about you can see the serial number of your VTX and the bootload at the firmware versions. In order to unlock the VTX, you will need to press the configuration button for 20 seconds after entering the band selection mode. So first of all, you need to enter the channel selection mode by long pressing this button for 3 seconds. You can see that now the LED is flashing once, which means that now we are on the channel selection mode. Then long press this button again for 3 seconds, and now we are on the band selection mode, which is indicated by the red LED flashing twice. Now that we are on the band selection mode, we need to hold this button for 20 seconds. And now this red LED flashes 3 times, which confirms that the VTX has been unlocked. Now after the VTX has been unlocked, let's measure its output strength. The frequency is set to 5740, and when the output strength is set to 25 mV, I'm getting around 26 mV. When the output strength is set to 100 mV, I'm getting around 93 mV. On 400 mV, I'm getting around 320 mV. And finally, when the VTX is set to 1000 mV, I'm getting around 1.5 watts, which is crazy. And now I'm going to let the VTX run for about a minute, and then let's see what is going to be the output strength and also its temperature. So after a minute we are still getting more than 1000 mV and of course it's important to keep the VTX cool in order for it to better perform. Now I'm measuring its temperature and you can see that it varies. I think that at the hottest point it's about 71 degrees Celsius. 
Now it got to 74 degrees Celsius. And the hottest point currently is 75.1 degrees Celsius, which are 167 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's why the output strength of the VTX is decreasing, but we're still getting around 1000 milliwatts after two minutes that it has been in use without being cooled down. In terms of pricing, the Unify Pro 32 HVVTX currently costs $50, so it's not cheap, but pretty much at par with the other VTXs that are sold by TBS, and it's going to be worth the investment if this VTX is going to perform well, which I hope it will. So stay tuned for the field test, which as I mentioned before, will happen in the next week or so. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the Unify Pro 32 VTX, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.